Well, hello friends and welcome back to my channel. I'm Renee and today all we're gonna do is bake bread. I'm gonna show you, I've got my little recipes here from my, that's going into my cookbook, but we are going to do a, a sandwich bread that's, that a few of you requested from my, with my Pullman pans. And we're going to do a beautiful, very soft uh, dinner roll that you can, that freeze well too. It freezes very well. A any of this will freeze well. And then we are going to do um, the cinnamon pull apart bread. And I believe we should have time that I can show you how you can make cinnamon rolls for your freezer. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to have a busy day. And let's get busy. All right, friends. This is this is an easy, easy recipe. The first one we're going to do is our recipe for our sandwich bread. And that's using your Pullman pan. And my pan is a 13 by 4. So right here, I've got one and a half cups of warm milk. Okay. And to that... I'm going to add my yeast because I want to make sure, not two tablespoons, I want to make two teaspoons. Ha! <laughs> Misread my own recipe. I want to make sure that my yeast blooms before I put all my other goodies in here. So we're just going to put two teaspoons of yeast into that warm milk. We're also going to put a little bit of sugar because that will feed that yeast. I'm going to put about a teaspoon of sugar in there. We're going to give that a little stir. And we're just going to let it set until it starts to bloom. All right. So now this is bloom. And it's been about five minutes. I just don't want to put anything in there until I know for sure my yeast is active. Okay, so now... We're going to put two eggs in there. We can put all our goodies in there now. We're going to do two eggs. Um, we're going to only do one and a half tablespoons of sugar because I put some already in there. It calls for two tablespoons. So we're going to do about one and a half. You can use honey instead. Works perfectly fine. And we're going to add two tablespoons of butter. Soft butter. Not melted, just soft. Okay. And we're going to start giving this... Actually, we're going to break those eggs up a little bit in there. The butter will all blend in. Just want to make sure those eggs get broke up a little bit. Now you put your dough hook on. Give that. Oh, I got to get a plug. I got to get it plugged in. Okay. Now that I got that. I hope the rest of my day goes better than what it started out to be. Oh, where is my. There it is. Okay, so we're just going to give this a little bit of a mix. Let that mix. So now I'm going to put in my flour. Let me put my sugar up here. I'll need that for the next one. And we are going to put salt in there, but I put that on top of my flour. There's so much controversy over so many mixed opinions, I should say, over salt and yeast. Salt, some people say salt will kill your yeast. Um, some people say it doesn't matter. But in all reality, the research that I've done and the reading that I've done into it, the biggest majority of them say it won't kill it, but it will hinder the rise. So I decided it's probably best to just put your, your salt on top of your flour when you add it in there. 
going to put all four cups of flour in here. We're going to leave that in there because we will definitely use that again. Now we're going to put our two, our one teaspoon of salt. Some recipes call for one, some call for two. We're going to do one. If you don't put salt in there, you will have nearly tasteless bread. Salt is what gives it its good flavor. All right. We're going to turn this on. My mixer is loud, so we're going to turn this on, and we're going to let this mix until it's incorporated. And then I'm just going to let it continue to mix to do the kneading for me. And I'm going to let this go about eight minutes once it's incorporated. If you're doing this by hand, you're going to want to knead it between eight and ten minutes by hand until you have a nice, soft, supple dough. All right, friends. This is mixed up. Oh, it's nice. Might be a little sticky, but we'll wind up with a nice, soft, supple dough when we're done. Okay, I'm going to move this just for the meantime, because we'll be using that again. We're going to put a little bit of flour down here on our counter, and we're going to scrape this out of here. I got a few little stragglers in there. I'm going to have to use that for the next one. So oh, this will be a beautiful dough. Okay. We're just going to flip it around here. Beautiful soft dough. We're just going to knead it into a ball as much as we can. It's good, it's soft, it's beautiful, and it's lively. See that? See how it bounces back? Beautiful dough. Okay. What I need to do is put a little olive oil in my bowl. It's going to rise in this bowl. I'm going to put it down first. Ooh, that flew up at me. Flip it over. This is beautiful dough. All right, now I'm going to cover it with my shower cap. And you know what? Those of this, quite a few people have asked me about these shower caps. I may have a link in my description box to them. I'm going to check. If I don't, I will put one in there because these are fantastic. And they're very affordable. All right, so that's going to rise for about an hour to an hour and a half until it doubles in size. Okay, <clears throat> here is the ones we're going to make now are the, these rolls are fantastic. I make them quite a bit. Um, these aren't my 30 minute rolls, my, the 30 minute dinner rolls or the pillow soft dinner rolls, but these are really close with the pillow soft dinner rolls. They make a nice, big, beautiful, airy, soft dinner roll. And we've got one and two thirds cups of warm water. And to that, we're going to add, let's see, my yeast, um, just a scant tablespoon of yeast, okay? All right, now to that, we're going to add one-fourth cup of sugar, and I'm putting it right in here. You know what? I need to wait till that blows. I get. I I don't really need to. You know what? Because I'm using my same yeast and it's beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in here. One fourth cup of sugar is going to go in there. 
Um, we're going to also put two eggs in there. Let me get them out. Okay, and we're going to do one third cup of olive oil. I love baking bread. I have baked bread for years, and I, I just love it. You can make a loaf of bread with water, yeast, salt, and flour. And that's really all you need. <laughs> Once you get that mastered, you can start adding stuff in, making your bread soft. I do um, all kinds. I do cinnamon rolls. I do different dinner rolls. I do um, garlic bread, herbed bread, all that. And it's just so easy to do. All right, now here's a little let's see we need we don't need the butter yet but we are going to put if i can find it this is a little secret ingredient some of you may have heard of this some of you may have not i will explain okay this is apple cider vinegar and we're going to add three quarters of a tablespoon. Okay, apple cider vinegar is an acid. We all know that. This, when you put apple cider vinegar in with the yeast dough, it helps to stretch the glutens, which by doing that, it gives it a, a beautiful moist crumb, an airy texture, and it enhances the flavor of your dough. It's wonderful, and it's the best little secret to add when you're making dinner rolls because it just makes them just light and fluffy and airy and moist. It's just, they're beautiful. That's why I got it in this particular recipe. Wonderful stuff. All right, so now that we got all that, we're going to give this a quick mix. Might get loud a minute. Bear with me. Okay, I wanted that egg to break up. I got that egg broke up. Now we're going to do five and three quarters cups of flour. And then we're going to put our salt in there. I can't talk when I do this, you know, I lose count. <laughs> and three quarters cups, which is right about there. And then to that, right on top of that, we're going to add our one teaspoon of salt. All right. So now this is going to mix for a while. Get, we're going to let it get incorporated, and then we're going to add our butter to this. And we're going to add three and a half tablespoons of butter once the dough is incorporated. So I'm going to let this mix, and when it's all incorporated, I'll turn the camera back on. Our bread is, is a little sticky, and it will be a little sticky. It's a beautiful dough, though. It's all incorporated, so I'm going to just throw this butter around in here. We're going to turn this back on, and we're going to let this mix. We're going to let this do our kneading. If you're doing this by hand, oh, something looks like somebody's out there. If you're going to do this by hand, which it's easy to do by hand, too, um, when you get all your dough incorporated before you start timing yourself to knead it, just put your three tablespoons of butter in there and just knead it together. It's going to be messy and sloppy at first but it'll knead in beautifully and just keep kneading until you have a nice soft 
supple dough. And that's what I'm going to do with my mixer right here. I've got the butter in there and I'm just going to turn it on and let it mix and I'm going to time it for about eight minutes. All right, friends. We are ready. And see now when you do this by hand, when you need this by hand, you won't get this sticky dough like I've got going right here. And that's all right. You'll have a nice soft supple dough because I am gonna need this just a little bit by hand. But I do gotta move this. Okay, we're gonna put a little flour down on our board, on our board, my table. <laughs> Well, we're going to get this all scraped out of here. Beautiful dough. Okay. I got it. Okay, now this is going to be a real soft, beautiful dough. And you'll see in a minute, we're just going to go ahead and we're just going to kind of knead it over itself. Okay, there we go. Beautiful. Just look at that gorgeous dough. Nice and soft. We're going to do our best to just get it into a nice soft ball. And take a look. See that how it does? Beautiful. That's what you want. All right, I got my little bowl here oiled up. I'm going to put it in there. And I'm going to flip it back over so that that doesn't dry out. Okay? And I'm going to cover this with a little plastic wrap. Ta-da! <laughs> I was under there. I keep my plastic wrap right under this table. I don't have a shower cap handy. That's going to go right on top of that other recipe. And that's going to rise till it doubles in size. And it's going to take about 45 minutes. That won't take long because that vinegar that's in that dough will help it rise quite fast. Okay, friends. This is my um, Amish white bread recipe. And I use this for my rolls or my cinnamon rolls and my cinnamon pull apart bread. And we're going to do, I'm going to do a double batch because we are going to make cinnamon rolls for the freezer. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We don't need to make a double batch. One batch makes two loaves. So we can do, a, no, I got to double it. Because Tracy will come, my neighbor will want some, my daughter will want some. So I'm going to double this batch. I will put the recipe for all of this bread in the description box below, but I will only do the Amish white bread for a single recipe. Just note that I'm doubling this, okay? Okay, we're gonna do four cups of hot tap water. And to that, we're gonna add, and I usually wait and let it bloom, but because I've been working with this yeast, I'm not going to, I know it's good. We're going to put two tablespoons of yeast in there. Okay. And we are going to do, oh, let's see, two thirds of a cup of sugar. I put a third cup in each one. We're going to do, oh, well, that's a quarter cup. Oh, where's my third cup? Where's my third cup? Right here it is. Let me dry this off. I washed my stuff between the 
while it was while my last dough was mixing, I washed my dishes because I always clean as I go. All right, we're gonna do two thirds cup of sugar, and then it's not the dough isn't a sickening sweet because you're gonna have your sweetness and your cinnamon and or your cinnamon and your brown sugar. And remember, I'm gonna tell you. I can't keep this stuff on my shelves in my market stand. It sells like crazy. All right, so we got that in there. Um, we're gonna do, what's the matter? Oh, my husband's out the door staring at me. <laughs> we're gonna do a half a cup of oil because each one calls for a quarter cup. And I'm almost out of olive oil, so I'm going to use vegetable oil, and that's just fine. You can use that. You can use any kind of oil you want. Just be careful what oil you use, because sometimes they alter the taste. And many of you have asked me about my chicken jar. This is what I store my oil in. My rooster. I love him. I got him from a friend of mine probably 10 years ago, and it was full of those peppers. If you ever seen, they, it had all kinds of peppers and garlic and everything in there. Well, it was old. So I dumped all that out. I cleaned this sweet rooster out, and I thought, hmm. He sat on my counter for a few days, and I thought, well, I think I'm going to put oil in him. He'd be a good babysitter for my oil. And that's what I've done. I've had him ever since. I absolutely love him. All right, so we've got that in there. We are going to put 12 cups, or I'm going to put 12 cups in mine. It's six cups each, so I'm going to do 12 cups in mine. And I put all 12 in there because I got this one pretty much to a science. I gotta go get more flour. That was 10 cups. I'll be right back. Okay, I keep my flour out in my sun porch where it's nice and cool. All right, that was 10 cups. We got two more cups to put in here. 11 and 12. Beautiful. All right, so we're gonna put our dough hook on here. And this is gonna mix until it gets incorporated. And once it's incorporated, you're gonna wanna mix this for 10 minutes or by hand, same. Don't forget your salt. I almost forgot my salt. We're gonna do two, te two teaspoons of salt in here. Goodness sakes, that could have been terrible. All right. Don't forget the salt. There we go, friends. Again, it's going to need for 10 minutes after it's incorporated. Okay, friends. This is done. This is beautiful. Uh, well, because I'm going to move this. Alright, I won't need to put flour down because this dough is not sticky. But I'm just going to knead it. It's beautiful and lively. I'm just going to knead it into a nice ball because my mixer did all the work. Beautiful. Now this is a double batch, remember, so this is a big ball, but this is gorgeous. All right, 
See how soft that is? Same thing, nice and soft. It's just bigger. We're going to put it in here, and we're going to flip it over. And I got a new shower cap. We're going to cover this, and this is going to need to rise for probably a good hour and a half, maybe two hours. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to set this over here on this recipe card. That way I got them all set on different recipe cards, what they belong to, so that when I come back in here, I'll know what is what. <clears throat> so none of them are ready yet. And when they are, I do believe our, um, yeah, our rolls are going to be the first to be ready. And then we'll do our Pullman loaf, our sandwich loaf for the Pullman pan, and then our cinnamon Rolls and our cinnamon pull-apart bread will be the last we do. So, I'm going to go have some coffee, wait for these to rise, clean up my little bit of mess, and you know what? I'll be back when they're all ready. Okay, friends, look at all our bread. It's all mammoth. It's beautiful. It's risen, just beautiful. Now, these are our rolls. So, what we're going to do, I got everything cleaned. We're just going to dump this out, just like so. These are beautiful. Okay. Flatten them out. I might need to get a little bit of flour on here. Maybe just a little bit to work with it. Oh, I gotta go get it. We're gonna put a little bit of flour on here. Put just a little bit under there. And we'll get rid of that sticky. That's what you do if it's a little sticky. Let me put this on here. Okay, beautiful, now we can work with it. Okay, put this in a ball. We're gonna wanna cut this right in half. Okay, we're gonna take this and we're just gonna Make it into a log. We're going to cut this in about eight pieces. Five, six, seven, eight. Okay. We might have seven pieces out of this. I think eight pieces would be a little too small. Okay, so we're going to take, and we're going to put these into a ball. I'll see as soon as I start rolling it. You want that nice and smooth on top. So you just fold it over itself. Make a little ball, and then you put it on your, thing, on your table, and you just twirl it. See how I'm twirling it? With your fingers and your thumb. See, real slow, you just twirl it. It locks that seam in. Oh, I gotta, I don't wanna forget. I need to spray my pan. Don't forget to spray your pan, your rolls will stick. Okay, there we go. Now we're set. Now we're gonna take our roll. I'm just going to put it in there. I'm just going to flatten it down just a little bit. So we're going to continue to do this with every one of them. And then the other bunch of dough is going to do the same thing, about seven rolls. We'll get about 14 rolls out of here, and it'll almost fill this pan. Just get it in there. You want it sticking to you, so put a little flour on it if you need to, and just roll it. Beautiful. 
Okay, I'm going to get going with these and get these all rolled up so we can move on to our next. Okay, friends, we've got that set. We're going to cover these because these are going to need to rest for about another 20 minutes. And while that's resting there, we're going to turn our oven on to 350. And I'll do that right now. Okay. Now we got to get my Pullman pan. These are wonderful. They don't recommend you to spray these, so we're going to use shortening in here. And you're going to come in here and you're just going to coat every nook and cranny in this pan. Okay? Because you can't have that bread sticking. afraid I'm not going to get enough in there and it's going to stick and it usually never does so I'll just get the corners real good because you don't want that sticking okay we got that good now I can set that aside we're going to put a little more flour on our table there And this is beautiful dough. Look at that gorgeous dough. Beautiful. Flatten it all out. I just spread it out because you want it the length of the pan. Get all the air out of it, and then we'll roll it into shape. Okay? So that looks to be about good. All right, so now we're just going to start rolling this up. and Roll it nice and tight. Okay? We're going to stuff the ends in. Pinch them all together. Pinch the seams underneath it. Pinch everything together real good. Tuck this side in. Just, just push it in with your fingers. Pinch it together. And then I roll it over. And I roll it a little bit to seal that seam. And that looks pretty good. Alright. And you can see, it's pretty good the length of the pan. So we're going to lay it right in there. And then I'm just going to flatten it a little bit into the corners. That's good. Oh, we got to do the top. Don't forget the top. We got to grease this up really good. All 
under that lip. All right, we got that. Okay, now this is going to go on here just like so. We're just going to set this aside, and this is going to raise a uh, second rise for about 40 minutes. Now I'm going to come through here, and I'm going to wipe this off, and I'm going to get stuff ready for our cinnamon pull-apart bread and our cinnamon rolls. So I'm going to wipe this all down really good. I love this table. It's so easy to clean. These stainless tables are wonderful. Okay. Okay, friends. We're going to do the cinnamon pull apart bread. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in my bowl here, two tablespoons, nice hefty tablespoons of cinnamon. I'll need any more than that. I'm doing a double, and this is how I always used to do it for my market stand, and how I'll continue to do it. Love this brown sugar. And I got one cup and a quarter of brown sugar. Also right here, I have got a cup and a quarter of butter, melted butter. And I'm just going to set this aside here. Don't need that. Okay, I need room. <laughs> See that in there? It's melted. I'm going to mix it all together because... When I do my pull-apart bread, I don't do slices and I don't twirl it. I just cut it in chunks, doesn't matter what size it is, and I throw it right on in here. And this will do two loaves. Then I mix it up and I just put it in my pans. And it turns out beautiful. And it, it has to be delicious. I mean, I think it is, so does my husband, but... Considering I put it out in my market stand and it's gone the next day, it has to be delicious because people buy it like crazy. Look at my dough. <laughs> I love it. Okay. I'm going to take the shower cap off that. Look at this dough, Papa. We're just going to punch that all down. As much air out of it as you can right in the bowl because we're working with quite a bit here okay beautiful now I need my oh it's right here got that set aside okay I'm gonna put this back into a ball so that I can Make it as even as possible. This this right here would be about four loaves of bread. You don't even have to do the cinnamon if you don't want. You don't have to make it into cinnamon bread. Okay, so we're going to set that aside. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? We're going to flatten that out. We're going to start rolling that. No, I'm not going to roll that out. I'm not doing the roll of cinnamon rolls. I'm doing the chunks. Okay, so all I do is I cut little pieces off. And I throw it in here. Okay. Throw them all in there. And then we're going to get our hands dirty. When you make massive amounts of this, this is the easiest way to do it, and it turns out beautiful. Now, if you wanted to, you could roll out each piece and layer it nicely, but when I'm making it for my market stand, there's no way. I'd take me all day to do that. 
So I've come up with this and it, it works really good. And I love doing it this way. This way it's really pull apart bread. You don't slice it, you just pull a chunk off. Okay, now, my pans are already sprayed. I am just gonna get my hands in here and I'm gonna get all dirty. Mix that all around, you want every piece coated. can see that. See that? I just coat. I just mix it around so everything is coated. And then I just divvy it up and I dump it right in the pans. Actually, I got that pretty good. Tell you, I do it all the time. And I don't miss waste none of this. I put all this extra in here while well, my hands are dirty. There we go. That is your cinnamon pull apart bread. Now, I'm just going to cover those with a towel after I wash my hands, of course. And those are going to sit and rise again until they're just about to the top of the pan before those will go in the oven. And I'm also ready to put my, I'm dripping. I'm also ready to put my rolls in the oven. I'm gonna take the lid off, put those in there, and those are gonna bake for 35 minutes. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> no, we got to, we, these don't just go in the oven. We gotta give them an egg wash, and we gotta put a little um, sesame seeds on them. So we're just gonna mix this. I got a little bit of milk in here with my egg. I'm going to get this mixed up, and we're going to give these their egg wash and put little sesame seeds on them. You don't have to use the sesame seeds if you don't want. And these will turn out beautiful. This is what will give them their golden brown on top, their beautiful crust. Okay, now I'm going to put sesame seeds on mine because I love it. I just go right around. These make good hamburger buns too. Beautiful. All right, now they're ready to go in the oven for 35 minutes. All right, now we can get busy with our cinnamon rolls. Okay. We're gonna flatten this out. Then we're gonna roll this out into a rectangle the best that we can. and they're not easy to roll. Okay, that's good. Now, the butter is soft, so I'm just gonna spread it on there. You can melt it if you want, but it does make a horrific mess when you do it that way. I have found over the years that 
It's just easy for me to do it this way. I sell these in my market stand as well. A lot of times, well, I'll do them both ways. I'll put some raisins and some nuts in them, but I'll clearly mark it so that they know. But I do sell more plain than ones with raisins or nuts. So. I want everything covered really good. I don't think I'm going to wind up using this whole thing. So that's good enough. Okay, now my cinnamon. I'm just going to shake it on here right out of the jar. And just coat it. This is what's nice about these. You can put as much or as little as you want on them. Doesn't matter. But I'm going to get these covered pretty good. All right. And same with the brown sugar. And these, if you were, weren't were going, if you were going to make them right away, you would definitely want to um, let these rise a second time. But because these are going in the freezer, we're not going to let them rise a second time. We're going to put them on their trays and put them right in the freezer. And I think that's pretty good. All right. So I'm just going to start rolling these up as tight as you can. going to have some beautiful cinnamon rolls too. Okay. That's a heavy cinnamon roll. Gonna push that end down into that a little bit. Okay. All right. So now I use my bread knife and I've got my trays up here. I don't want them touching on my tray because I don't want them to freeze sticking together. So I'm going to cut this about every two, two inches. Now you can take that little piece that you pinched off and put it right underneath there. Actually, we'll do this one this way. These are beautiful. Put that right under there and it'll freeze like that and then it won't come undone in your pan. These are beautiful. Let's take a look at that. 
and we're going to freeze them just like this. We don't want them sticking together. We might bake a few of these off. And that's exactly what we'll do. Those are going to go in the freezer. I'm going to cover them up with plastic wrap. But they're going to go in the freezer just like this so that they can flash freeze. These two, I should bake them. No, because we'll have cinnamon bread. So we're going to slide these over. And we're going to see if we can't get these on here. Slide these over a little bit. There we go. Now that's good. I'm going to get some plastic wrap after I clean this off. Mr. Wayna. Mr. Wayna. Would you like a cinnamon roll? See which ones are going in the freezer? Yes. Would please. you like me to bake you one of those up? Yes, please. Okay, then they can see how they look. All right, I'll bake one. I'll bake two of them. I'll just bake them. I'll just bake them in a the bread pan. And they'll turn out beautiful. Okay? Okay. You try them for them? Yes. <laughs> okay. I'm running out of spray. Which one do you want? Don't matter. Don't matter. I'm going to do this one. And I'm going to do the two ends. How's that? Okay. Okay. We're going to bake these two ends. All right, friends. These are ready to come out. And these are beautiful. Look at those rolls. Gorgeous. I've got my Pullman bread in there. Okay, these ones are ready to go in, too. I'll show you these. These ones are our cinnamon pull-apart bread. Those are going to go in just like so. Aren't these beautiful? Ooh, just gorgeous. Okay. So now we're just going to give them a little bit of butter on the tops. I love these. These turn out so nice every time. And that vinegar that goes into this dough it just makes them airy and fluffy, moist, and just delicious. It enhances their flavor. Almost makes you want to put a little bit of vinegar in all your bread. I like rolls that are real light and fluffy, but I like heavy bread. I was raised German. My family always made the heavy German bread. And, uh with a nice crust, crusty outside. The bread that I grew up on um, is, is a lot like the uh, no meat bread. The crusty on top and the soft in the center. That's how German bread is, it's wonderful. Well, at least what my aunts and uncles would, made, would make. All right, so those are gonna just cool there. And those friends are gorgeous. We still got about 20 minutes left with our um, Pullman, our sandwich bread is in there. 21 minutes left with that. And we just, we got 30 minutes with the um, cinnamon pull apart bread. And then when the cinnamon rolls get risen enough, I'll go ahead and put them in there too. So we'll see in a little bit. Okay. We got, the Pullman bread is done. It's still a little warm. These I just took out of the oven. They're gorgeous. 
And I always give them just a little bit, just a little bit of butter on the top. Not, not tons, because there's lots of butter and cinnamon and brown sugar and just, it's just loaded with love. So, we're just going to give them a little bit here. And my neighbors, I'm going to give my neighbor a loaf. She's going to love it. All right. So there we go. Now, I have to let those stay right there and cool off for a few minutes before I flip them over and take them out of there. And I always flip them over on a, a tray because they'll make a mess otherwise. So, but this, we can just take right out of here. Look at that loaf of bread. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh. Oh, it smells so good. It's still warm and it smells divine. Look at that, friends. Beautiful. Now, I guess I could put just a little bit on the top of that. It might have just a little hint of cinnamon, but it isn't going to hurt anything. We'll put just a little bit on here. Not too much. Just to keep that top nice and soft. You can make, I well, I'm sure you can. I don't have a recipe for it, but you can rest assured as much bread as I've baked, I am going to make a recipe for potato sandwich bread. Not sweet potato sandwich bread, but regular potato sandwich bread. That's what my husband loves. So I've just got to work on it. And once I get that mastered, I'll share that recipe with you. Now, all I got left is my cinnamon rolls. And they got about five minutes left to go. And then we'll be back. Well, okay, friends. Here we go. We've got beautiful rolls. We've got cinnamon pull-apart bread. We made cinnamon rolls and sandwich bread. Doesn't look good? Looks very good. Which one? She worked all day at it. <laughs> Which one? I, when I roll. cook for the market stand, I cook a lot more than this. Mm -hmm. I have tons of it. You want to try cinnamon roll? Yes, please. Well, go ahead. Take it. He'll, t he'll taste test. They're probably good and hot still. Oh, very good, friends. <laughs> you like them? Mm-hmm. Mm, beautiful. I will put the the um, recipe for each one of these in the description box. I hope you guys give these recipes a try. They're fantastic. They're hot sellers in my... Um, market stand and the only addition I'm going to do to the market stand this year is I'm going to do some of the sandwich bread for my market stand but everything else sells beautiful out there so you all have a wonderful day thanks for hanging out with me in the kitchen baking all this beautiful bread and we'll see you in the next video and thanks for watching thanks for watching <laughs>